So one of three flights uh, being announced this morning by the airport. Owen Corrie joins me from Travel Extra. Morning, to you, Owen. Good morning, DJ. Great news. We have Greece, we have Croatia, and we have Be- um, Brussels. It's a very interesting one because um, these whole schedule that Ryanair have been putting into the system has been relatively slow to load. Um, they put a lot of flights in last night. They didn't actually make an announcement. But needless to say, the eagle-eyed people of Cork were very quick to pick up. Uh, as you say, the Cork to Rhodes flight has been a long, long time waiting for us. And uh, it came, it, it's loaded in the system. It's twice weekly. Um, it come, it's for next summer. It's likely to be uh, seasonal. And we do have uh, Charleroi coming in in March. And we also have a Zadar in Croatia flight, which had already been loaded. That's starting in June. So that's three new routes. It brings the total of for Cork Airport back up to the mid-50s, about 54 routes. It means that also, I mean, the other figures were announced earlier this week, uh, Cork Airport back on track to about 2.7 million uh, passengers this year. It's within sight of where it was when it peaked uh, during mm-hmm. the years of the Celtic Tiger. But of course, things were a lot different then, and that's the time you were talking about when we last had flights from Cork to Greece. I, I would say it's the bones of 20 years, Owen. I can remember going out of Cork in 1997, I think. Uh, but I can't that's- remember going since. Yeah, and I suspect it was a charter flight then, and there are sort of, uh, you know, the, the problem with the what happened uh, from around the late 90s to the middle of the Celtic Tiger time, 2006-2007, was that charters really suffered terribly because their lunch was eaten by Ryanair and Aer Lingus, to a lesser extent by Aer Lingus, but the charter... The, Cream charter routes, the Malagas, the Faros, Palma, the New York, all of those uh, low-cost airlines moved in on them. Now, Greece still is very much a charter route. TUI would be a very important operator on that. Um, they would The hotel stock uh, that you have in roads would still come under, come, under, come under the remit of the tour operators in a way mm-hmm. that the independent booker doesn't. Yeah, really roads, will, roads will be difficult to do your own building out of, won't it? It'll be, it'll be difficult to build your own, get your own apartment, get your own transfers. It would, it yeah, will. yeah, I think. But there are uh, packages uh, available from the likes of TUI, and TUI own roads, really. They are the major tour operators there from all of Europe. So they, you can buy your, uh, your, your accommodation packages there. Mm. Ryanair already operate there out of Dublin, uh, but it's, TUI have a presence there still. Mm. It's still very much a tour operator operators market and that's what's interesting in what's been happening in recent weeks is that Greece uh, and Croatia which is also a, an option out of Cork which traditionally would have been more tool operator and um, we see low cost operators going in. Now Ryanair uh, have, oper- have announced three it's quite unusual for Ryanair to base aircraft just for the summer and then move the entire operation out for the winter but they've been doing that in um, Zadar and in, uh, they just announced Sarajevo uh, last week mm. and not Irish flights but it seems to be a new tactic of Ryanair's you may, it all you, you may be sure there's money there Owen if Ryanair are going after it you can be absolutely sure they're making money there it's quite complex it, it's actually the, the profitability of the route long ago used to be how much people would pay and could you fill the plane uh, could you fill the aircraft Ryanair has managed to uh, come in with this amazing marketing and uh, negotiating thing where they go to airports and say, um, I can bring you two million passengers um, and how much is it worth to you? And they get subsidised yeah. by regional governments and regional airports. And I suspect a bit of what's going on here is that uh, it's, it, the reason they can do that, by the way, is they do deliver. They deliver mm-hmm. um, more than 90% load factors and every single route that they open. Yeah. Now we've got, Greece will be huge out of Cork because it's big, it's big out of Dublin and it's very popular for island hopping. It's a, roads will be a good base for island hopping because it's well served with ferries and stuff to, to the other islands if you want to do a bit of island hopping. 
and it's a big island. I mean, people uh, sometimes forget it's about the size of County Waterford. So it's, you know, it's, it's not uh, massive, but it does take, it is an island you could hire a car and drive around. Mm. And it became an issue with the fires last year that most of the uh, impact of the fires was quite a distance away from where yeah. the people were staying. But it is a good place and Greece has been growing. It's still, you, you, you could, you could, keeping a sense of perspective on this, PJ, that most of Cork's uh, sun routes are to Spain. And Spain, uh, one island in Spain, for instance, Gran Canaria, would do as many visitors from Ireland as the whole of Greece would in a year. Okay. So it's still, it's still, Spain still dominates, followed by Portugal in terms of sun, France in terms of overall visits. Uh, but Greece and Turkey, um, they're good alternatives and they're very interesting the post-pandemic have been growing very strongly out of Ireland I suspect part of that is the fact that they, they subsidised uh, Ryanair to open up a lot of these routes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For Christmas breaks Lanzarote, Tenerife, Gran Canaria are still very popular, they're, they're booking heavily I think for Christmas out of Cork Very heavily booked and the prices out of Cork seem to be uh, spiking uh, oh, Don't go bit. there Owen, don't go um, there <laughs> We know I think that they probably called the demand, uh, they probably, but the supply was outstripped by demand a little bit more than the airlines expected. There are issues also um, with airline t- aircraft delivery. Um, that might affect Ryanair's entire schedule from last year. We had to pair back, they pair back a few of their uh, routes this year because the aircraft didn't arrive in time and mm. um, Michael O'Leary is doing his usual fuming about that. But uh, you, we do have this, uh, you know, you have a good range because you have um, not just Gran Canaria and, Ten- and um, uh, Gran Canaria, Lanzarote and Tenerife, but you also have Fuerteventura, which uh, the, the way the hierarchy of the Canaries is that most Irish people go to Lanzarote and then Gran Canaria and then Tenerife and Mm. the material sometimes gets left behind. It tends to be the one that you can get the better value when the others, the prices spike to the other ones. It's it's the the quieter of them. A lot of people go there for for longer holidays than just the two weeks as well to stay. This Brussels trip, Charleroi. Now, I remember the last time Charleroi came up out of Cork. Like, you got to get a train. It is a, a, yeah, there's bus train options. It's not on the metro. Uh, Zaventum, the main Brussels airport, is on the metro. It's two stops, three stops downtown. Charleroi is, it's, you know, when it started, it was basically a tent. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you, were, you were out, you were out in the, in the countryside and it was, I, um, I, I suspect that's what Ryanair went there because it was much, much cheaper than Zaventum. Then they had a row with Zaventum and now Charleroi is where they're doing most of their flying to. Um, it's, it's not as but it's not as disconnected as it once was but you are talking about a bus uh, of about four stops to get the metro and then you get into town so it is a little bit awkward yeah you'll want you want you wouldn't want to be in a hurry for an eight o'clock in the morning meeting going that one but listen <laughs> it's connectivity and we'll all appreciate it i see their own where cork's been shortlisted to host uh, the 2026 Congress of the World Federation of Tourist Guide Associations, and that's a mouthful. When will we know? Um, the announcement will probably will the the big pitch comes in January. The Congress, the World Congress, is on um, the, in in a few weeks' time. There are about four candidates up for it, and uh, it's very very good work by Apke, who are the tour guides of Ireland. Um, Maureen Ahern is based in Cork uh, for many years, the president of the current president is from Cork as well. So th- it's a very um, well organised uh, body that, uh, you know, brought regulation to tour guides and, you know, made sure it sta- kept standards of tour guides going for many years. And tour guides suffered very, very heavily during the pandemic because they were the ones that were usually sole traders. So, um, their, and their livelihood was just was swiped away from them for two years. But what um, they, it takes a lot of work to get the pitch in for this uh, World Congress. When it comes, it'll be very, very valuable for Irish tourism because effectively you get the representatives of the tour guides from around the world. Um, you get to showcase your island mm-hmm. and you obviously will bring them to see all the wonderful attractions around Cork and Kerry. And, Would Cork be considered uh, favourites at this stage, Owen? I think I think we get hit at a good rattle. Um, what tends to happen with Congress is in an, when Ireland goes up for them, there's much more interest 
uh, not just from delegates, but from the families of delegates. It's a sort of an attractive place to come rather than some of the big city locations that these uh, congresses end up. It would be a, a lovely thing to get and a tremendous mm-hmm. kudos to Aki for getting it even this far to get to the bidding process. Yeah, I, I suspect some optimism in your voice there, Owen, but time will have to tell. Thank you. Owen Corrie of uh, TravelExtra.ie. It's three new flights announced out of, well, not announced formally, but they're there. They've gone up on the system, according to Owen Curry. The Cork to Charleroi in Brussels starts 31st March with Ryanair. Cork Road Roads in Greece starting June 1st, Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then on the Dalmatian coast to Croatia. There's a third flight, Zadar. Zadar uh, to Croatia. For, that's your kind of Game of Thrones experience, isn't it? Or part of it anyway.